What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, you are going to learn about hash tables in C Sharp. You are going to learn how to use them, when to use them, and a lot more about the topic. So if you like the video, then please hit that like button. It really helps us out. And now let's get started with the video. To understand the concept of hashing and tables, first think about a real dictionary. So assume we have a German and English dictionary where every word in German corresponds to only one word in English, because that would be the limitation here. So when we try and translate the word Auto, which in German basically translates into car in English, we use one word as a key word that we can search for, for example, and we got one translation as a result. So there's always this one-to-one -one relationship. So we have auto and that translates into car. And we can achieve exactly that also using hash tables. So let's say we have a student registration system where every student has an ID and many other data such as name, age, grades, and picture, and so forth. For such a system to work, we will need a special ID for every single student, so it has to be unique. If we were to store this data using a hash table or a dictionary, the student ID would be the key, and the student data would be an object that contains all of the other student info. And that would be the value. So we always have this key value pair. Okay, so this is how you can find the actual data, so to speak. And this is the value that is behind it. So you can see it like a locker. So this is the ID of the locker or the location of the locker. It could be different kinds of types of data. It doesn't have to be an ID. And this will be the value. So in the dictionary, they have to be of the same type. In a hash table, they can be of different types. So this could be an integer and this could be an object, for example. So we're going to look at hash tables first. Therefore, we're going to create a new class, or actually I have prepared a new class for this. Let's put it down here. And it has a couple of properties. It has an ID property, a name property, and the GPA. And then we have a very simple constructor, simply assigning the value. So whatever ID we pass to the student object when we create it will be the ID of that student object and so forth. Okay, so nothing too fancy here. We're just using a normal class as we have covered in the class chapter. Now we could of course go ahead and create this class in a separate file. So we could go ahead and open up our solution explorer, go ahead and create a new file here. So add new item or a new class like so and call it student but for this example i'm going to keep it simple and put it into one file as you know it's best practice to put it in a separate file so that you're not mixing things and you can easier find files and classes and all of that okay so now that we have our student class we can go ahead and create a hash table Okay, so inside of our program in here in the main method, that's where I'm going to define a new hash table. And it will be like so, hash table. And I'm going to call this one table, which will be new hash table. The hash table class is inside of system collections. So we need to add this namespace up here using system.collections. So hash table, and it's different to the hash tables namespace because that's how I called my A, which might confuse our IDE here if we want to enter hash table without having this namespace added to our project. But now that we have it inside of our programs class, we can use it. So we have this new hash table, which will now be a table of data. And we can put the data that we want in there. So this is how you can create such a hash table, how you can initialize it, with a empty hash table object like we did here. So now what we can do is we can assign values to this hash table and we could even call it students table to make our code a little more readable. So now we just need to create a bunch of students that we want to have in our table. So let me add those in here as well. I'm going to call them stud one, stud two, stud three, stud four. 
and they will all be new student objects. So here, this will be student with the ID one, it will be Maria, she is in GPA of 98. Then we have Jason, which will have the ID of one. This is this ID here, the unique identifier, so to speak, and then the GPA that the students have. Okay, so now we have all of those students and we can assign them to our students table using the students ID. And a good practice would be to go ahead and say students table dot add. And here we use the student one ID. So this one here, the property as the key. So you can see here, a hash table allows us to have a key of type object. So it can be any type of object as the key and it can be an object optional or nullable as the value. So we can assign a value or it can be null. Okay, but we're going to assign a value and that will be the student one itself, like so. Okay, so now we added our student one to our students table. And we can do the same thing with the other students. And we're going to use their ID for each of them. So let's use students table here for all of them. Quick pause. In this video, you'll learn something about C Sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C Sharp developer, then definitely check out my C Sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C Sharp. So you're gonna learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. Okay, so that's our hash table now. But how can we fetch entries? So how can we retrieve entries from our hash table? Well, let's look at different ways for it. So the first thing that we can do is we can just create a student object here. So student, and this object will be called stored student. Okay. So I'm going to get the student value from my table. So in this case, it's the student table, students table like so. And here, similar to how I access it in an array, how I access a value in an array, I can access it by an ID. So here, for example, let's say I want to get the one at ID one, like so. So here the problem is that this hash table can have values that are of type object, right? As we saw earlier. So here, if we go ahead and call the add method, you can see we can assign a key, but then the value will be of type object. And that means that this here will be of type object, but we cannot assign just an object type to the student. It has to be of type student because this stored student one is in fact of type student. Okay, so we need to make sure that we cast it into a student here, and then this will work. Okay, so we're casting this object into a student because we know that inside of the student's table at position one, so at the ID one, the value will be in fact of type student. Okay, so here you can get the student at ID one, you could get the student at ID two and so forth. But that only works because we know that we are using, in fact, these numbers. So if you want to get it otherwise, you could use stood one by ID. So this will now give you the value behind the student one ID. So this will basically give you this value here or the student here. And it's this one to be precise. So this one here, because that's what we are storing at this ID one. So now we can go ahead and do something like this, where we now, instead of write hello world, we are going to actually write something useful where we write the student ID, the name of the student as well as his GPA. So we're going to use stored student one dot ID. So we get his ID, we get his name and we get his GPA. And in this case, it's her GPA and so forth because it's Maria at position one at ID one. Okay, so let's run this and you can see student ID is one, name is Maria and GPA is 98. So here we saw how we can create a hash table. This is how we can store data in the hash table. Actually, this is where we store the data in a hash table. 
And then this is how we can retrieve data from a hash table. So now let's assume we want to actually print all the data inside of our hash table and we don't have a particular key at our disposal. We can simply do that by getting all the keys from our hash table. To solve this, first we have to discuss a struct called dictionary entry. Whenever we add a new entry to our hash table, so our key value pair, a new dictionary entry object will be created for us and it will get inserted into our hash table, which means that a hash table is basically a collection of dictionary entries. So using a temporary object of dictionary entry, we can go through our hash table using a for each loop. So let's look at this in this particular example here where I'm going to go ahead and use a for each loop here. And this for each loop type will be the dictionary entry. That's the struct that I was called, talking about. You can see here struct dictionary entry. So what is the item name that I'm going to use? I'm going to use entry. Of course, you could call the student or whatever because you know that the entries will be of type student, but let's say you don't know it. And you can also call it entry. And then what is the collection that we want to run this through or that we want to get the values from? And that will be our students table. So this one, retrieve individual item with known ID. And here, retrieve all values from a hash table. Okay, so an entry inside of our hash table is of type dictionary entry, as I just said. So this allows us now to go through this table, the students table, and basically display the values. So here, because entry dot value will return an object, you can see here it says object, but what we want in order to get the student details, it's going to be a student object. What we'll need to do is, we'll need to do the following. So we create a temporary value, which will be our entry value. Now we have the same problem that we had up here, okay, where we need to cast this into a student because it's just an object, right? But we want it to be of type student so that we can access the student properties. So, because otherwise entry value dot, it doesn't have ID here. I can't access its ID, I can't access its name, all of that stuff, even though it exists in there. But our IDE just doesn't allow that because we first need to make sure that we convert or cast the value into the right type, which is going to be our type student. So now we're casting it, we're storing it temporarily, and now we can go ahead and write the individual values to our console, for example, or use in our program however we want. So here we can use the student ID by using temp.id because temp now is of type student and student has ID, name, GPA. And we can access all of those to now iterate through the entire list of all of our students. So let's do that real quick. Let's run our code and see what this for each loop does for us. So you can see it goes through it. It says student four is Steve, student three is Clara, student one, two is Jason, and one is Maria. So you see it goes from back to, well, it starts at the very last entry and goes up to the first entry. Now that is if at this point we don't know if it's a student, even though here we are converting it into a student already. This is really just to show you that a hash table is really just a collection of dictionary entries. So let's look at how we can simplify this for each loop. We can simplify it by actually saying for each where the variable type is going to be a student, the item name, well, you could call it student. I'm just going to call it value like so. That's fine. And the collection that I want to go through is going to be table, well, students tables dot values. So there is this I collection of hash table values. So it gets an I collection containing the values in the hash table. So this allows us to go through the values directly without having to basically do what we did here, where we converted it or where we cast it into a student object. 
So now we can just go ahead and do the same thing as we did here. But now, of course, it's going to be value.id and so forth because it's not entry and it's not temp, but it's going to be, in fact, value. Okay, because that's what this for each loop is giving us for each iteration of it where it goes through all of the values that we have and value is going to be the individual value that we're currently looking at for that particular iteration. So in the first iteration, it will be Steve, then it will be Clara, then Jason, then Maria. Okay, so if we get rid of this line here or this for each loop and we run it again, we will see that we get the same results. So Steve, Clara, Jason, and Maria. Okay, so that was a quick introduction into hash tables. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like and also leave a sub if you loved it. And if you loved it really much, then check out the C-Sharp Masterclass. You can find the link in the description below. There you'll get a huge discount. And that course will make sure that you will become really proficient in C-Sharp programming. All right, so thanks a lot again for watching this video. I wish you a nice day and see you in one of the next videos.